From London, I'm Afshin Rotansi, and this is Between the Headlines on Press TV, broadcasting internationally on five satellites and on Sky Channel 515 here in Europe. Joining me for a closer look between the headlines and the stories of the British and American press are Carol Turner of the Stop the War Coalition, which is marching from the U.S. Embassy in London within the next 24 hours, and Tufik Machnuk, Associate Director of the Institute for Policy Research and Development. And on the phone from the United States, we have former Assistant Treasury Secretary Paul Craig Roberts, who, amongst other things, is a former editor for the Wall Street Journal, as well as having been associated with the Hoover Institution and the Cato Institute. He's the author of The Tyranny of Good Intentions. But first, you can join us uh, from anywhere in the world by texting us on plus four four seven eight zero 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 eight zero eight six. 0 0 You can email us the address bth at press TV. .co.uk. We have an email, actually, in the past hour or so uh, from an Arnold Cressing. I simply wanted to express thanks for the excellent shows and guests that you bring onto the shows with news and analysis not seen on the mainstream media such as BBC and CNN. You're a worthy rival to some Qatari station, if not better. The shows I enjoy include Between the Headlines. Perhaps you don't agree with that. Email us and tell us why. Well, President Obama's plane is just about to, or depending on whether you're watching the repeat, just has landed a few miles away from this studio. London is gearing itself up for a summit that commentators and certainly police are already dubbing a summit of violence. Protests against capitalism and against the wars on Iraq, Afghanistan and Gaza are planned for the next hours, few hours, at the U.S. Embassy, the Bank of England, and at the British Parliament. All this comes as representatives from Iran and the United States have been talking about Afghanistan at The Hague and the G20 summit itself precedes a NATO summit and then a European summit in the Czech Republic. Obama is then due for his first official overseas visit. He's chosen Turkey, the country his prime minister walked out of a meeting of the rich in Switzerland over Israel's 22-day war against Gaza. Well, welcome uh, all to uh, all our guests. We begin with uh, President Obama in the New York Times. President is expected to get warm welcome from the public uh, by Julia Word uh, when President Barack Obama's Air Force One lands at London Stansted for six days of meetings with other world leaders. He might struggle for backing on issues, but he can count on unabated support from the European public. Well, Carol, uh, unabated support. Your uh, group is um, demonstrating. Well, against his predecessor's policies. It's not against Obama himself. It's against, it's a, to take up his slogan, yes we can, and to demand that that's applied to bringing troops home from Afghanistan and Iraq and elsewhere. So it's not a... Well, he, he won't from president. Afghanistan. He wants them in Afghanistan. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But that doesn't stop us saying what's right and what should happen. And Jafik, uh, what do you think uh, of the unabated uh, enthusiasm for Obama, given his cabinet team? And in the past few hours, there was a piece in the, the Atlantic magazine. We just uh, it just went to press, I think, about uh, about uh, what uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, who's just um, taken some kind of oath of office, and he's saying, "Who will dominate the oil in the region, Washington or Tehran?" How, how uh, should we judge uh, Barack Obama's uh, position here at the G20 in London? I think that article is very interesting and it actually lays out what uh, many of us have been saying for a long time and that the conflict with Iran is a geopolitical one to do with energy security and not uh, a nuclear threat of any sort. Um, with regards to the hype over Obama, I think this just comes to show how good his marketing campaign was. He did win an award. His marketing campaign won an award for being uh, so good actually. Um, uh, one over Apple, which are known for their marketing capabilities. So the Europeans are still very excited, mainly because of their dislike for the uh, Bush administration. But I think if we were to assess the policies, uh, we wouldn't be as excited as, as people seem to be. And even when you assess the article here, the um, President expects it to get a warm welcome from the public. No one even discusses any of the policies or any of the issues. People are excited because he's young, um, he's confident, he's uh, full of energy. So no one's discussing the issues. And in fact, if you look at what he says about some of the issues, you find parallels between him and the Bush administration that no one really is focusing on. 
Um, if you look at the situation in Iraq, even though he wanted to, he promised he'd pull out straight away. We went from six months to 18 months to 24 months. And the phrases he uses are very similar to the Bush administration. If you um, look at his, his, his situation, for example, on NAFTA in the US, um, he had to f uh, move away from the position that he took during the elections. So we need to be very cautious of, of the issues. We need to look into the issues and not fall for the marketing campaign because the, the public relations industry has perfected it pretty much. Marketing industry. Paul Craig Roberts, uh, live on the line from Panama City in Florida. Uh, do you think uh, Europeans should be uh, rest easy with, uh, or at least be optimistic about Barack Obama given the uh, appointments uh, he's made and, uh, well, it's not even 100 days yet, but uh, do you think we should uh, be cheering him on? I don't think anything has changed except some of the rhetoric. Um, if you look at his appointments, they don't uh, indicate any change. It's the same American foreign policy focused on American hegemony, on American dominance. Uh, he'll be coming to the G20 with the intention of imposing American solutions. I don't think anything substantial has changed. He's not repealed any of President Bush's presidential directives or executive orders that set up the foundation for a domestic police state in the United States. Um, there have been no investigations of the criminal acts of the previous administration. Um, the withdrawal from Iraq is turned into uh, 50,000 troops uh, being there forever. Uh, the war is shifting to Afghanistan. I don't think uh, that, uh, that there's we, been that big change. I think mean, Obama represents uh, any any change. He's actually count on that thing, that point about Iraq. Uh, Fifty thousand troops. Now we find out will be there uh, for well. Paul Craig Roberts said forever, but I mean, certainly there was no timeline for their withdrawal. Absolutely. And Afghanistan continues, and of course Pakistan. There was a report about this. Uh, terrible uh, situation at the police barracks. Uh, American uh, bombers are bombing Pakistan. They bombed three days after he was inaugurated. They've been bombing ever since, killing many civilians. There was never any doubt that the withdrawal of troops from Iraq meant the withdrawal of a foreign presence. It was the renaming of military forces, turning them into civilian forces. It was the minimizing the presence. Uh, it's not very popular, of course, that troops uh, in, in the home countries where, where troops are dying and therefore to create the impression that uh, there is a withdrawal is, uh, it, it has been part of, of what's been planned. But there's never been any doubt in our minds that uh, there will be a presence maintained there for strategic reasons. And the Stop the War uh, Coalition aren't going to do anything about it? Of course we're doing things about it. We continue to protest. Um, I think what you're saying is that we're not necessarily getting the sort of publicity that we get when our activities are at the height. I think that we're, everyone, Stop the War and all the other organizations that are protesting around the G20 summit are going to get some of that publicity in the next day or two, simply because that's the top item of the agenda. But it, the fact that we don't get publicity doesn't stop the message that we're putting forward. Do you, think, do you, think, do you think these demonstrations will do anything? Not really. These people meet all the time. The G8 is just an official meeting, but these people meet all the time. And um, I think the agendas have been set. Uh, what, what's going to happen is going to move forward. I, I highly doubt that, that there's going to be much pressure on these countries. Well, on, on the policy the issues, uh, the uh, FT, like every paper, has lots on uh, G20, the issues that they're going to have to be discussing. They've got a um, strange graph or a strange sort of chart uh, which uh, talks about all the mixes of uh, issues. Peter Tal Larson, who actually was quite prescient all through for the past 10 years, I was looking him up and trying to catch uh, the author out, but of course there have been lots of uh, writing on the issues, the economic issues, about uh, what was going to go wrong, what, what, uh, who predicted it. Paul Craig Roberts, uh, the debate has moved on since uh, I spoke to you perhaps uh, eight months ago as signs of uh, the economic crisis were entering the uh, media. Do you think the debate uh, between the headlines um, 
is a proper debate about the future of capitalism in the face of uh, grimmer and grimmer economic statistics?